Hey, Crazy Will here today. Today we're going to be talking about what to do with old hard drives. You have some of these laying around? I'm going to show you two options that you could do with these things. Hey, Crazy Will from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're going to be talking about what to do with some old hard drives, guys. I'm going to show you what you can do, what options. If you have old machines laying around, laptops perhaps, or just a desktop that's just collecting dust, and you're never going to use it again, I'm going to show you what you can do. Now, my options were, I had a time capsule, and maybe you've heard of it, Apple had problems with the time capsules dying, so I had a two terabyte hard drive, and that's actually what I used to edit all of my YouTube videos. I put it on there instead of putting it on my Mac. Now, my first option for you guys, if you just have one or two hard drives laying around, you don't want them to go to waste, is a hard drive docking station. And this is an older one. I'm gonna post the one that I actually have running my YouTube hard drive, but this is the docking station. Really inexpensive. This one I originally paid like 60 bucks for, but this was almost 10 years ago. The new one, I only paid like $30 or maybe $22, something somewhere around that price range to now it could do the full size hard drives or it could do the laptop hard drives. 2.5 inches and 3.5 inches. Just for those people that don't really know what size they are. So obviously this is a regular laptop hard drive and you click it into here and then it has a USB cord that goes to your computer. The new ones have USB 3.0 which that's what you want especially if you're doing video editing like I do right from the drive. I've been doing that for over a year now now, it works out phenomenal, guys. I have no problems. It, it doesn't have problems keeping up. It does matter the speed of the hard drive. So you want to try and make sure you're at that 7200 RPM spinning and you want to have a higher level cache. But I, I have one from the time capsule. It was pretty high. It was pretty good. And I just stuck it in there and I said, hey, let me try editing on it. And it worked out. There's your laptop size hard drive. And I recommend this first before anything else, before you get into the next option that I'm going to be showing you, because you could test the drives, make sure they're not bad. That's not why the computer died because you don't want to store anything. But what I use this for is you can hot swap them out. I don't really, I, I turn it off and then turn it on and then swap them out, read the information. I use them like that. So basically they're hard drives, but I use them as like a disk drive. I just pop them in, put the information I want to store on it and then turn it off, take it out and store it. So, you know, I have other hard drives here and I labeled them before I got my label maker. This is TV and movie backup this is video games for my retro pie backup. And this is a 160 gig hard drive and this is a 150 gig hard drive. My family members know I'm a computer geek. So they give me their laptops after they're done with them. And usually it's cracked screens or bad motherboards or something in that aspect. Very rarely is it the hard drive that's the problem. If it is, I usually change it out for them. But in these case, these are still good disks and I use them for storage. So so, you know, if you just have large files and you just need to store them as a backup of a backup, because I'm a nut at my house, I back up everything. DocuStation's really great, guys. You could use them to access your hard drives. You can clone drives. That's why it has two bays. You can put another one here and clone the drive, as long as they're the same size or bigger. And I did want to mention this. You can have two hard drives running in this, and they will come up separately, which is really great. So you could have two different hard drives. Like I used to have one for my time machine backup on my computer before I got another time capsule and I had the other drive just as my YouTube backup. Now it's just YouTube and it's a single drive and if I need to back up some other stuff I can put it on there. Okay, now for my next option. If you have more guys, you can set up a NAS. What is a NAS? It's a network attached server, which is great if you're one of these people that have a lot of stuff and you don't wanna hook your laptop or like, or you have multiple computers like I do and you wanna transfer data and you wanna just store it. I actually built mine out of an old computer that I'm not ashamed to say that I found in the garbage. This is a Dell Inspiron 660. It's an older computer, it's from 2013. It's running an i3 Intel processor. So it still has four cores, which is really good, especially for a server. It's got about eight gigs of RAM and one terabyte hard drive in it, running Windows 10, which I'm actually gonna keep Windows 10. This is the great thing if you have an old computer that you're not using that much, is this whole thing runs on a jump drive. 
you get a little 8 gig jump drive like I have here. Technically you should get two of them so that way it's redundancy backup. I didn't. You configure your free NAS on this. I'm not going to get in on how to set up the free NAS. I'm just going to show you the setup. I think on a later video if you guys are really interested I will get into free NAS. But it is a free piece of software. You upload it to a jump drive and then you need another jump drive to set it up. Basically the way I have this set up which is really cool. The way this works is I set up the boot to work with USB first and then the hard drive. So if this USB is not plugged into here, it opens up in Windows. And I think Windows is good for me to have because I haven't really been messing with Windows in the last, I'll be honest with you, seven years. And I know I fixed friends' computers, I helped out people with other things. We have Windows 8 at my job. I just, I'm a Mac guy and I thought it would be good since I got this computer, I would run Windows. And when I'm not doing any projects in Windows or tutorials in Windows, which those are coming, I am running my free NAS. And I just shove this right in here and now this will boot up in free NAS. Now I'm going to give you a quick tour of what it looks like inside the free NAS box that I modified and then I'll show you what the interface looks like. Like I said I'm not going to get into setting it up I just want to show you and just give you guys a heads up of what may be coming if you guys are interested in this but let's take a look inside and see what I did to modify it and add hard drives. All right so we're on the workbench side. We're going to take it off right here and I will leave links down below for the parts that I bought so that way you guys can get an idea. Okay, first of all, it had a CD drive in it and then it just had one hard drive. So I had a total of four areas that I could put four hard drives in and I needed a little bit more than four hard drives. I have quite a few hard drives and I wanted to add it in there. I wanted the operation system hard drive, so that took away one. I still wanted to keep the CD drive, that took away another one. I also wanted to have my two terabyte hard drive. I wanted a play disc because I'm going to be learning about free NAS myself, which is a 150 gigabyte hard drive. I wanted to add two laptop hard drives, which I have one terabyte and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. And then later on, I would like to add a little bit more. So there is room for expansion. Let me show you what I did to expand this out. All right. So the first thing you need is power. And this is your regular uh, power adapters right here. So I had these two here and then I had two up here. What I did was, so this is a dual port power SATA cable. Basically what it is, is it turns one port into two ports. So that way you could add more hard drives. That took care of one problem. So now I could add more hard drives with more power connected to it. So this was part of a kit and I'm gonna show you what else came with the kit. It also came with more uh, SATA ports and it also came with a double docking station, which I'm gonna show you right now. This is the double docking holder for two laptop hard drives, hook two hard drives to it. So we have two hard drives, one's 500 gigabyte because I had it laying around for my old MacBook. And then I have a one terabyte actual hybrid hard drive that I upgraded my MacBook and now it has a solid state drive hard drive in it. Just to show you how the power cable works, you grab this one right here, you put the male to the female, hooks it right in there. Now you got two female ends and we're gonna connect these to the hard disk. And those will provide them power. It's like an L-shaped bracket. It's a little strange, but it works. So we got, that's the disk drive, and then this is my test hard drive. Okay, so the next scenario I ran into, especially if you have as many hard drives as I do, was getting data cables to them. Well, I came up with a solution. They actually make a PCI Express card for that. And it is located right here on my PCI Express card. So I'm gonna take that out, show you what it looks like. This is a PCI Express card, which as you can see, has four more ports, two here and two up here. This goes for a whopping $25, guys. That's it. And it's got capability of six gigs of transfer speed. Only thing I wanna tell you guys that I ran into with this card, and I don't know why, it works with FreeNAS and it works really well with FreeNAS. The only thing was when I plugged it in, the CD drive worked on this one, but when I put the hard drive into this one, I don't know if they go in sequence, I don't know what the deal is, but if you're not seeing it on your free NAS, if you set up drives on your free NAS and you're not getting it, I just want to put this tip out there. Change the port. I find if this port's not working, I put it in this port. I don't know if they work in sequence or how they work, but I had to put the hard drive on this port, but the CD drive worked on this port, which was a little strange. I don't know why it did that, but if you're having problems with this card, that's probably it. Give you a quick look at the box right there. You can see the connector. It's a regular PCI slot. We'll push that right into the card like so and attach your drives. 
So like I said, the CD drive would work on this drive right here, and then the hard drive would only work on this drive. It has like an L shape in it. You gotta make sure the L is lined up right. You don't wanna break it, which I almost did the other day. And there you go, guys. That's my setup. Now I can plug this up. So let's go onto the computer and take a quick look at FreeNAS and what it looks like to actually use FreeNAS. Okay, so we're on the computer now, and I just want to show you really quickly the docking station that I was talking about earlier. This is the YouTube docking station, so you can kind of get an idea of how it works. That's my YouTube, and I actually designed that little uh, icon. That's what it'll look like when it comes on. You can eject it just like you would a normal disk. I'm not going to do that because I'm in the middle of a project. So that's how you access the docking station that I talked about earlier. So it just shows up as a regular external drive, which is great. Now, let's talk about FreeNAS. It has a web interface. Okay, so normally it has a login screen. You type in your username and password, which you set up in FreeNAS, but you can see right here, it gives you a lot of information. It shows you the drives. It gives you the list out of what it is, what version I'm running, uh, what processor I have, and yes, it was four cores for those of you who doubted me. Eight gigs of RAM, and then these are the drives that I have hooked up to, and I only have four. The one hard drive that's a terabyte is not on there. I mean, you could see it, but but this is, these are the drives. They tell you they're healthy. They tell you what the temperature is. There's a whole bunch of stuff here, and I don't want to make this video super long, but what I will show you is storage, and you can see the pools. You know, these are my pools and the disks. Let me just show you the disks. These are all the disks connected to the computer. So you can see I have quite a bit of disks connected to it. The new is my play disk. This unestablished one, that's Windows. Open hard drive, that's just an open hard drive. Got TVs and movies, and I have my master backup, which is two terabyte turn on sharing you got apple sharing at unix sharing i mean this is a huge elaborate system you got plugins you have backup ways i mean there's so much like you can make tasks i'm really exploring this myself it's really cool there's a lot of stuff in here i'm learning a lot about it i can even turn it off from here you can actually click on this and shut it down or restart it that's not the fun part. The fun part is when you actually go into the interface, uh, when it's all set up and said and done, and you just go to your window and you just click on free NAS. And once you click on to it, you have, it has a username and password normally, mine's automatically in there. These are all my files. These, that's the one terabyte, the master backup. That's the new, the play, the play drive, which I could show you that because there's nothing special in here. So it's just random. This is a playing thing that I'm working with. I'm running a corn script that actually backs up. So I want to make Make a random backup uh, every month. I think I want to make it back up to a drive. If you did it the correct way, these drives would all be the same. I Like I said, I'm making this tutorial. It's not the correct way to run a NAS. If you did it correctly, these would all be the same size and they'd be running a ZFS pool, one major pool, and it would show up. You'd use like four drives as one. I'm not using it the correct way. I mean, I, I don't like to say it's not the correct way, but I'm not using it the way it was intended. I am I'm actually making it just individual drives connected to my network and I click and drag over so one of these drives I'm gonna make actually grab from the master drive and back up so I'm gonna use one of these as a backup but the correct way to do it was all these would be one drive and that way if one drive fails you still have a backup of on one drive that's the way a ZFS pool is supposed to be done on it but I I did it pretty much my way which because I don't have all the same size hard drives so I didn't want to make it one pool because I don't think they'll play together very well, especially in the new NAS. But back to, you know, this shows up as a drive on your network. You click on free NAS, you click in there. I just want to show you how it works. You can just click and transfer files over like so. So there's two ideas what you could do with those old hard drives. I hope it helped guys. If it did, if I gave you some inspiration or helped you out in any way, please do me a favor and like and subscribe down below. And remember, you could do anything, and I mean anything, if you put your mind to it. Later guys! And one of the options... Really? Really? Are you gonna be noisy throughout this whole video? Bells? Really? And dogs. It's over. That's it, guys. I mean, there's other videos up there. Or if you want to do me a huge favor, click the like button or subscribe button's even better. 